There is tension in the Abia State chapter of the All Progressives Congress following increasing calls for the cancellation of the primaries and the conduct of fresh ones. A group of protesters on Thursday stormed the national headquarters of the APC to protest what they described as electoral fraud and in the state governorship primary elections. The protesters, who are supporters of one of the aspirants, Daniel Eke, alleged that no shadow election took place in Abia State. There is no valid candidate as we speak. And we are here to call on the party so that the opportunity of APC fielding the candidate in this in the 2023 general election will not be foreclosed. Because if anybody challenges what happened in Abia on Thursday, and uh, you will see that APC may end up not having a candidate for the general election. And we are calling on the party to fix a date, a fresh and valid election. Fresh and valid direct primary election. And let all the uh, contestants in Abia State be well informed, adequately informed. We don't want this procedure of laying of ambush, a kangaroo process that the court will throw away, thereby making all our efforts in Abia State to be a nullity. Now, in another three days, the All Progressives Congress is expected to hold a special national convention that will produce the party's presidential candidate in next year's general election. The process leading to that presidential primary has been anything but smooth. The governor of Kogi State in north-central Nigeria, Yahaya Bello, is one of the 23 presidential aspirants on the ballot for the APC convention. Right now, we're being joined by spokesperson of the Yahaya Bello campaign organization, Cletus Obun, for a brief discussion. Welcome to the program. Now, of course, um, thanks for having me arise. No, I'm sorry. Go on. You're, you're welcome. Thank you for being here. So let's just jump right into it. Um, after that meeting that took place on Tuesday, we understand that there's a bit of anxiety in the air. I'm just and there might also have been a resolution to field a northern candidate in the 2023 presidential election. How confident are you? that that northern candidate might be Yahaya Bello? <laughs> well, let me say that uh, the GYB slogan is never to compartmentalize and regionalize the presidency of Nigeria. And that is why, if you remember, Yahaya Bello was the very first person to come out to run for this presidential election, even before the issue of zoning came up. He's one of those who have insisted that Nigeria has gone beyond zoning and that there should be what they call a, 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 preference, a, 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 a competency test for all those who are going to contest. And that is why he is not particular because he's from the north. He's saying he wants to run because he's a Nigerian and competent to hold Nigeria and to, in fact, preside and superintend on the fortunes that is called Nigeria. So the issue of him emerging has never been in doubt. Others just came into the fray because it was now narrowed down to a free-for-all fight. And they're all engaging in uh, some kind of area area market discussion about whether a northern candidate or a southern candidate. In the first place, it is not preposterous that we, the, a ruling party should be waiting for an opposition party to give direction, that it required the courage and confidence of Yaya Bello for us to know that Nigeria has come to a point in the present trying circumstances in which the best should be our best. Our, our best should be the best that should come to rule this country and direct us to a new dawn in which Nigerians everywhere are free and are unfettered in their speech, in their association, and in their development. So for me, and for us in the Yaya Bello campaign organization, it is time to prove that the man who is ready for the job should be given the job to do. We don't want accidental leaders. Those who are jumping into the fray today, this late comma, this later day, apostles of democracy conversing for a northern candidate are just being opportunistic. And I don't think that even in medicine, the greatest doctor of morbid anatomy will ever admit that a man who is only coming in just to feast on dead bodies uh, should be allowed 
to carry out any surgery on anybody who wants to survive. Those who are coming now are latecomers. They are not intended to do anything good for Nigeria. They're just to occupy the space because it is their turn, not because they are ready for Nigeria. So Yaya Bello, for your information, has been waiting to take Nigeria to where it ought to be. In the present circumstance, security is one of the biggest challenges this country has. And Yaya Bello has proven that with a small microcosm of what is Nigeria that is in Kogi State, he can expand, expand it and extrapolate it to show that he can keep Nigeria secure and safe. So we are not waiting for anybody to tell us that it will fall on us, but that we can, on a good day, pound for pound, uh, program for program, policy for policy, take on anybody and get the ticket to fly the flag for Nigeria and for APC. Well, I'm not exactly sure who the latecomers are that you are referring to, because we have people that have been involved in the struggle for democracy, you know, dating back to the military regime. Of course, we have the kingmaker, we have the vice president, and we have a number of other notable figures. But let's leave that aside. I would like us to talk about the agitations of the Southeast, who believe that in the interest of justice, fairness and equity, it is their turn to produce the next president of the country. Now, if Yahya Bello eventually, you know, if he picks the ticket, how does he plan to unify the country, considering the agitations of the Southeast? If there is any governor in Nigeria today who is a pan-Nigerian, who has demonstrated in word and in deed that he's an inclusive governor, it is Yahya Bello. And I'll give you the statistics. In terms of gender equality, if you look at Yaya Bello's parade of appointees and those walking around him, even up to the campaign organization, you will discover that it's all about men, women, and youths. In terms of his government, his SAs and commissioners have cut across all the tribal divides of this country and from the six geopolitical zones. If I give you the list of his appointees, you'll be shocked. From Imo State to Lagos State, from me in Crossover in his campaign organization as a spokesperson to Jonathan Zinguina of Hope 93, who is now Hope 23, you will find an array of a pan-Nigerian who, who is not just promising Nigerians, but who in his government has shown that he's a pan-Nigerian. And when you ask about who are the latecomers, in the entire what you call northern Nigeria, northwest, northeast, and north central, only Yaya Bello was the person who first came out to say, I'll run for presidency. The later day sense are those who just came in here because they were touting about that the presidency can come from anywhere. Before then, only southern candidates, uh, aspirants, came out, whom you have just named, Jagaban, the vice president, Ojuz Okalo, the governor of Cross River State, the minister of transport, and all those people, they all came out early enough believing that it is only equitable. In fact, people like uh, Governor of Kaduna State, Katsina State, had come out very early to say you should go to the South. But which part of the South, they never named. The claim of the Southeast to the presidency of Nigeria is only within the realm of natural justice. Social justice, being an offshoot of natural justice, cannot avail them because you have to, as my people will say, cry your cry and farm in your own farm. You cannot be, for example, investing in Asia and expecting to get dividends in America. So if in the Nigerian political equation, the East has invested so much in PDP, and they think that PDP should show them that, great. If they have come to APC as Humayi has done, and we have in Imo State, and they think that they can now equate themselves, fine and good. But if you look at what is going out, uh, playing out in the Southeast today, I do not know if in all honesty, they themselves are not even afraid that they cannot even run an election. People were doing registration for INEC in order to qualify them to vote for the president they want. They were shut and mouth down. Now, this is self-inflicted injury, which I do think that they have to address as a group and as a people. I sympathize with them. Their position is germane, only to the extent that they are organized enough to do that. But what is playing out there, where people are screaming that there should be no election, in which people are being mouthed down on a daily basis, I do not think that their case is being made justifiably. But for Yaya Bello, you can see clearly, like I said, that he was the lone ranger in the entire northern region, and therefore was waiting for an opportunity like this for him to happen on the Nigerian scene. And I do think that like Obama in the United States of America, a, a dark horse 
He's going to emerge and shock Nigerians with the kind of things he's going to do. He has the energy, he has the intellect, he's been a civil servant, he's been a public servant, he's been a private businessman, he's a chartered accountant, and he sits here today as an aspirant, as a sitting governor, going for a second term. You cannot ask him what have you done, because the records are there to speak for him. All right, you talk about a dark horse. In this case, uh, we're discussing the white lion, so I see what you did there. Um, building up to the APC primaries coming up on Monday, uh, you, we have discussed the fact that there are some heavy hitters under this uh, ticket that are vying for the same position that uh, your candidate is as well. And, of course, we're talking about uh, Asiwaju Bola Ahmed, Tinubu, uh, the likes of Yami Oshibajo, and uh, many others. What is your confidence that uh, your client will come out with the ticket at the end of the exercise? And um, just for realistic sake, uh, if he doesn't get the, uh, prim the primary ticket, does he have alternate ways to uh, still be useful in the polity, especially in uniting Nigeria? In his mid-40s, in his mid-40s, Yaya Bello is only reaching for the sky. And I do not, uh, not getting the ticket is a very remote possibility, very remote possibility. Because we are quite optimistic that with the work done so far, with the galvanization of the youth across the country, and with the women and the gender question staring them in the face, could you have imagined, the last time we ever saw such a thing was Muhammad, uh, Muhammad Gaddafi, when he came to Lagos to visit Abacha, or was it Babangida? He came with an all-female security apparatus. Today, if you look at Yaya Bello, his ADC is a, a, a policewoman. His DG of campaign organization is a woman. And of course, look at the, his chief of staff is just in his uh, uh, mid-30s. Just is not up to 40, he's under 40. His chief of staff is something unprecedented in our history. I do not remember any such thing. So, if you have the youth that make 45% of the population and 75% of the voting population of Nigeria, 45% of the total population of Nigeria, 75% of the voting population, then it's as good as sitting pretty on the ticket. What we really need is understanding from our elder statesmen who should be communicating with the gods and communicating with God Almighty and telling him them that we bless this young man, let him come and take Nigeria to the promised land, and that we have tried our best to bring democracy, and we have bettered it, and democracy is about to be ossified, it's about to be solidified, it's about to crystallize, and therefore we need a new generation to take over. I do not imagine that it is in the thinking of people like Jagaban and people of that age to think that Age is a question. We are okay, not Cletus, we, have, we actually have 90 are. seconds we left. The old and the new. Cletus, I'm so sorry, we have 90 seconds left. And, I, and yes, since, you've been talking about, that... since you've been talking about the youth, I'd like to ask you if you think it's of any significance that the Nigerian Youth Congress has, dis, um, has distanced itself from Yahya Bello and refused to endorse him. Is this of any significance since you're focused on the youth? And we have about, what, um, 70 seconds now. Please go ahead. No, 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 no. When you take one group, one organization, National Youth Council of Nigeria, the Nigerian Union of uh, um, um, uh, uh, NANS, National Association of Nigerian Students, and such other groups are there. This is one tiny group out of so many. I do not imagine that their endorsement, I have not known any person that have endorsed that have won election any time, any day. But that does not mean we cannot engage them. Out of sheer misunderstanding, out of sheer mischief sometimes, but in the political game, Everything and anything can happen. I do not think that Yaya Bello's endorsement by that organization or that group of youth in any way presupposes his rejection by the youth. On the contrary, more youth organizations are coming in to join the group, to, do, to join the movement. The Yaya Bello movement is a movement for life. It's not going to stop because it's running presidency. It's going to take this movement beyond the presidency of Nigeria in government and out of government, Yaya Bello will always identify with the youth, even when he gets old, because clearly there must not be a gap in leadership. And leadership recruitment must start now. And if the youth want to take over today and not wait for tomorrow that will never come, then they have Yaya Bello to identify with and to prop up and to support for this engagement. 
Well, As thank we move you so much. into the primaries on Sunday, I call on Nigerians. I thank call on Nigerians so to Honourable please look at the GYB, the White Horse of Kogi State, to give us the best that it can give. Well, thank you so much for coming on Newsday and all the Welcome. best in your campaign. Spokesperson, Yaya Bello Campaign Organization.